Yes. But he's been an example to me. I used to spend hours in his house just talking to him. Sometimes True. I've been through a lot in my younger life, and I wanted to do something crazy, and Uncle Fred said, it's not worth it. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so it always caught you off the cliff, but you think you got something that him, him and Mother Ryan said, it's not worth it. Put it in God's hand, and you know what? They were right. So it's good to listen to the elders and people that have been around for a while that have wisdom. Uncle Fred has been an example. I love him. To Dez, Athena, Steve, we like brothers and sisters. Yes, yes. And he's always going to be a part of my heart. He's going to be missed forever. He made that kind of an imprint on my life. He was just an example. We sit down and talk. I remember so many things he did for me. Just talking. I'm talking about Uncle Fred, I need you to do this. Tell you my father, they went and cleaned my house one day because I had to go to work. And so people was coming to my house. I didn't ask them to do it. That's just what love is. That's love. Yes, and yes. When people go out of their way, that's family. Family going to look out for you regardless. And whether you're right or wrong, family going to have your back. True. And he was that type of man. He looked out for you. You didn't get sad. Don't worry about it. We got you. And that's what family's out about. We, know we, we love him. We're going to miss him. And he's in a better place right now. He's resting in heaven. I pray my spirit in the Lord. Amen. 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 We got one more? You know, I remember as the next person come that when my mother had a stroke, and I remember one time I was working overtime, so I came to the house for about two hours, and he was feeding my mom, and he looked at me, he said, you know, Steve? He said, everybody have a burden they have to bear. And even though he said that, he didn't complain, didn't say nothing. He was just coming right along, you know. And I said, boy, that really showed me how much he really loved my mom. Yep. You know, he just loved her. And I was like, wow. I said, I pray and hope that as I get older, that God... <laughs> That they'll love me and take care of me <laughs> the same way they did him. What, can we go one more? One more? One more? Okay. <laughs> Elder Thomas, go ahead, sir. God bless everyone. How are you? I um, was sitting there and debating uh, and reminiscing on the times that Elder Ryan was in my life back in the 90s, early 2000s. And I realized that he was probably the most humblest man I ever met in my entire life. And there was never a time when he could see, I guess through my eyes or my facial expression, I don't know what it was, but he was always able to see when there was something wrong. And I got to know him as a man of wisdom. A man that Embody what the scripture says that if you love your neighbor even as I love you the Bible says that God will manifest himself to you as well as putting the word of God before him so when I, I look back over his life and, and I think of the times that uh, we used to come to prayer meetings me, him, Mother Ryan, Mother Bradley Mother Ramos, Mother Nunez Sister Owen he was faithful, and so was the, the elders I just, I just mentioned. Every Monday or Wednesday night when we came to prayer meeting, there was never a time he didn't show up. It's true, it's true. And, and there would be sometimes I'd be dead broke. He would look at me and say, Brother Thomas, we'll take this money and put some gas. No, no, he said, listen, if you don't know how to take this small blessing, how are you going to take a big one when God gets ready to give you something? Yes, yes. So I'm sitting back there, and, and I'm going through all these emotions because over the years, I stopped coming to Triumphal for very foolish and stupid reasons now that I'm mature enough to talk about it. But I miss opportunities to talk to him. And I'm sitting back there dealing with regret. But I can hear him because the times he's seen me doing that, as someone said, or read, read an obituary, if, if you don't have thick skin, they don't ask for nothing. Yeah. 
You know, because he, he will tell you the truth. And he never missed the opportunity as God led him to encourage me. So I'm sitting there, and I can hear him just in my head. The Bible says to live is Christ and to die is gain. Yeah. You're looking at a man who stayed here for our benefit. Because he gave of himself. Mm -hmm. And he didn't do it as an obligation. It is something that he was born with. It, it, it was inherent. The Bible says that God gives each man a measure of faith. Mm -hmm. And so do a lot of other things. And you see it embodied not only in Elder Ryan, but you see it in his children. I look at Dad, Steve, and I cannot pronounce Etheric's name. I hope I did it right. <laughs> That's a hard name for me. But, but you see the fruit that he left. Yeah. The Bible says if a man love God and keep his word, that God will love him and him and Jesus will come in and sup with him. So his fruit abides with his children. That means now whatever promises and gifts that God blessed him with rested on his children. You can clearly see it. Now, I don't know the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren, but I can know this. I know the spirit of Elder Ryan lives on. Amen. Amen. So I want to thank God for the, the, the opportunity to be able to know him and know that in my heart he never dies. His flesh is gone, but the spirit lives on. Yes. And I thank God for his children because they've been nothing but friendly towards me and my family. Uh, and sometimes I, I, I don't know if I can encourage them because if I go and talk to them, they might end up encouraging me <laughs> because that's what he does. So if that's his fruit, that's their fruit. So I thank God for the opportunity to be able to let the family know how much I truly love them. Thank you. Amen. Now we're going to have a song selection by Sister Terry Nicole. Thank you, Lord. Your grace, the day. 
One more time, say, hallelujah. We are grateful for the life he lived. Hallelujah. 93 years, not much people can say that. And we know where Grandpa is, right? He was, we were just so blessed to have his love. We were just so grateful for his life and so grateful for his legacy. So we worship you, God, today for all you have given us. Glory, wonderful, praise him, God bless, hallelujah, hallelujah. We just want to make these, uh, the quick announcement, uh, there's a call, the license plate number is two cars, FDX9526, that's blocking the driveway, they want to get out, please move your car, and also KFN3922, we ask you to please move your car, so that's two cars, that's FDX9526, and KFN3922. Without further delay, we're going to ask our Apostle Smith to come. Amen. Praise the Lord, Apostle Smith. Come on, let's clap our hands and give the Lord a praise tonight. Uh, can we just stand and give the Lord a praise except the family? Just stand and give the Lord a praise tonight. Amen. We're celebrating an honorable man of God. Amen. Come on, let's clap your hands and say something. You might not get a chance to say anything tonight, but you can give God a praise for this man of honor tonight. We thank God, amen, for his life. We thank God for his legacy, amen. He's a powerful man of God, amen. I know Brother Ryan for over 42 years, amen. And I, I won't even go into some of the things, amen, that, you know, can describe him, amen. But he leave an impression in my heart and my life, too. Amen. Sometimes even when he's at home, I usually drive past and just stop and talk with him. I remember when Mother Ryan was ill, amen, I stopped by one day and she 
feeding Mother Ryan and wiping her mouth. And I said, I hope to God when we got older like that, my wife and I would still have that kind of love. Amen. I thank God for him. Amen. And tonight, it's a pleasure. It's an honor. Amen. Just to be here tonight, and I'm so grateful I know him. Amen. And I thank God for the family and Brother Terry and all the saints of God tonight. And it's just an honor. It's just an honor. It really doesn't feel like a funeral service. It feels like a sin. It feels like he's sitting here alive. And that's why I tell you just to give the Lord a praise tonight. For God is a good God. Come on. God is a good God. God is a good God. We sorrow not because he's gone, but because we love him and we miss him. And at this time, it's an honor. It's a privilege to present to someone, introduce to others, the speaker for tonight, our presiding bishop of the triumphant church of Jesus Christ worldwide. Amen. We say that he's a gift to us. Amen. And there's no other than our bishop, Bonnie Brown. Let's put our hands together. Amen. Where's Lady Brown? Lady Brown, where are you? Ah, Lady Brown, wave your hand. God bless you. Amen. That's Lady Brown and Bishop Barney Brown. It's a privilege to present to you, sir, to the congregation of the righteous, that the Lord will have his way as you speak the word of God in your life tonight. God bless you, Bishop. Let us praise the Lord. As the old folks say, you see one in a thousand. And Elder Ryan was that one in a thousand. I knew him from Emmanuel. We go back a long ways. And when you are a real Christian, I'm going to put it that way, you don't change. You're the same today, yesterday, because Christ lives in you. I never seen him upset. I never seen him argative. He never argue. He tell you what's what, and you take it from there. Uh, there's one thing about him. He loved his wife. I said he loved his wife. There are uh, people that love you as long as you can do and help them. But when you get so you can't do at all, you know, they find another avenue. But uh, Elder Ryan was not like that. He was a praying man. He was a man that believed in the truth. There's only a few of us left. I, I am. 81 years old now, and the Lord has been good. When he came into Emmanuel, he was a jewel. Bishop Brown saw the quality in him when he first laid eyes on him. He said, this is a man of integrity. And my wife often, and I'm going to sit right down, my wife often tells me, your character goes a long ways. How you carry yourself. So, uh, Elder Ron, you going on. Somebody said that he died. No, he just started living. He just left the body to live on. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. 
And whenever I get the message that a saint of God has died, I begin to praise God because they left this and went there to live forever. God bless you. The family, I want you to know I love you. Uh, the daughter here, we've been knowing going back from me. Emmanuel, praise the Lord. I want you to know that uh, we just don't say words, but if it's anything after this is over, because the phone will going to stop ringing. The car is going to stop coming. And if you need someone to talk to along with your pastor, you can call your friend, Brother Artis. Leave the title off and say, Brother Artis. And I'd be more than willing to talk and encourage you and the rest of the family. God bless you. You had one of a thousand. Your father one of a kind. God bless you. Ryan family, those that come from near and far, uh, we appreciate you coming on today. Praise the Lord. We, amen, experienced the loss on this side of a great and wonderful man and father and grandfather, uncle, praise the Lord, and great grandfather and all the titles that he possessed, and to see his family here today, some come from different places, amen, tonight, uh, to show their respect and their love for this wonderful man, and we thank God for you today. Well, they said the service ends at 8 o'clock. This ain't the first time they did this to me. Do this to me regularly, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, I think the family, the words that you said tonight was important, and your voice being heard tonight uh, was an important voice. And to hear about someone's life that they touched, made an impact, was a blessing. It meant encourage. Uh, there's a song that said, "Let the life I live speak for me." Amen. And Brother Elder Deacon Ryan's life speak volumes tonight. And we thank God for him. It's a privilege to be, amen, in the family. I got my brother married to his daughter. My sister, Claudia, is married to his son. But they didn't leave me no family member, so <laughs> I'm outside, amen. Amen. But uh, the wife I found, because the Bible said, he that findeth a wife, the wife I found, I wouldn't trade her in. She's all right with me. Praise the Lord. And I thank God for her. Amen. But God is good. We, we've known them so, so many years. They got to be over 40 years now. And a blessing, I remember when the call of God came on our life and we wanted to fast and we needed a place to go and fast and pray. And Brother Ryan gave us the basement and told us we could fast down there. Praise the Lord. Yes. And we was down there for a while and it was so hard some days. Some days, amen, I thought I wouldn't make it. Apostle Smith Amen. He was there. And Apostle Smith do everything at warp speed. He moved. <laughs> but after fasting a few days, one time he got up to go to the bathroom and he started stumbling, crashed into the wall. I said, Apostle Smith, you got to take it easy when you get up here now. You know what I'm saying? But Brother Ryan is the one that opened the doors for us. And as a, a 
Brother Thomas said that for many years after uh, Deacon Ryan retired, amen, he was part of our Wednesday noon prayer. And our Deacon Ryan never missed a prayer unless he was out of town or traveling. Amen. Each time he would come to the altar, kneel down right over there somewhere. You see him wiping the tears from his eyes. He's praying for his children, grandchildren, calling on God for them. And I said, amen, it's good to have somebody like that in your life. Amen. He was concerned about the least of them. Praise the Lord. And sometimes I'm driving with Brother Ryan and he'd get a little agitated about one of the tenants that didn't want to pay rent. And he talked to me all the way home. 90% of what he said, I don't know up to today. I just say, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Amen. Yeah, they got people out there like that, yeah. Whatever else you say, and I know, amen, how you feel, praise the Lord. Because at one time I had a little two-family house, and Brother Jake, them tenants don't want to pay no rent for the bill, oh, Lord have mercy. But we made it by the help of the Lord, amen, and Brother Terry's still trying to be a landlord, praise the Lord, amen, but he's doing good, amen, but I got out the landlord business, praise God. Amen. I'm in the Lord's work now, and I thank God for that. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. Amen. God is so good. Uh, yeah, it's after eight. Y'all ready to go? Not yet, not yet, not yet. Amen. Not yet. Just ready to go early. Amen. Some of you didn't have no dinner tonight. You're a little hungry. So, give me about 15 minutes, amen. amen. When we hit 8.15, oh, that clock is fast back there. All right, they try to, you know, I think the people in my church do that to me on purpose, you know. <laughs> they set the clock fast, so I think I'm behind time and Amen. It's just hitting the 8 o'clock now. All right. So 15 minutes. Amen. I want somebody way in the back to just wave and say, Pastor Brown, you hit your 15 minutes tonight. Praise the Lord. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Amen. Somebody sent me something about how to mourn forward. And I couldn't exactly get it together like that, but I'm going to do my best tonight. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And tonight, praise God, just for a few minutes, I want to talk from the subject, amen, in the encouragement to mourn looking forward. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. Today, praise God, in this sermon, I just want to, amen, talk about some of our attitudes when we grieve. Amen. But we, as believers, when we grieve, we grieve toward healing. And the reason why we grieve towards healing is because we have hope for the future. Amen. Uh, eschatology is a branch of theology that has to do with the future. And when you see people that don't look towards the future, amen, and they live life without a purpose, they find themselves outside of the will and the plan of God. And when things like death happen, they don't understand. Why would God take people that I love and that are close to me? Praise the Lord. One of the reasons why this subject has to be addressed is because every one of us here tonight, whether we want to or night or not, we have to face the reality, amen, that death one day can come knocking at your door. Praise the Lord. And we have to address, amen, how we're going to handle the grieving process. Am I going to be able to cope with losing my loved one? During this pandemic, many of us have lost some loved ones. I lost my mother this year, amen, and still I'm grieving about the loss of my mother. But praise God, what helps me to get through some of this, amen, is that I don't grieve like everybody. I grieve, hallelujah, knowing that my loved one is in God's hand. When your loved one is in God's hand, it gives you hope so that not only can you grieve pressing on to the future, but you can grieve celebrating the life of the one you lost because you know that to be absent from this body is to be present with our Lord. The Bible said if this earthly house of tabernacle were dissolved, we have another building, not made with hands, but it's eternal in the heavens. Praise the Lord. And sometime when you work through loss, amen, and you go through the grieving process, Hallelujah. Life teaches you that sometimes you've got to make an adjustment. And the adjustment is, is that, praise God, even though our elder deacon, Daddy Ryan, might be gone, praise God, we know that he's with the Lord. For the Bible said that Jesus himself told us, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you deal with, hallelujah, the mourning, the loss of someone. Amen. There are several ways in which you can deal with it. Some get angry, praise God, and angry at God, and angry at life, and angry, praise God, at why their loved one has been snatched from your hand, praise the Lord. But I want you to know, praise God, and I want to help you to work through this process to know, praise God, that God promised in his word. He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. I'm adjusting to the fact, praise God, that our loved one is gone. Hallelujah. But the Bible tells me that everyone that has gone through life has had to make an adjustment. Hallelujah. Abraham, praise God, the father of faith. The Bible said, praise God, when he went through the process, he lost some things in his life. Hallelujah. But he came to a point in his life where the Bible said, Abraham looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I'm here to let you know tonight, pray God, that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. And I dare not trust a sweeter praise, but I wholly lean on Jesus' name. And on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Praise the Lord. What gives me hope in this life is that Jesus died. They put him in a borrowed tomb and they thought that his life was over. But the Bible lets us to know, praise God, that just like Jesus died, the Bible said he rose again. Hallelujah. For he declared, hallelujah, at the grave of Lazarus, he said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Praise the Lord. What gives me hope in this life is knowing that, hallelujah, this amen uh, loss that we experience today is not the end of life. For the Bible tells me, hallelujah, there is a city that is four square and there's a river that runs through the midst of the city. Hallelujah. And there's a tree on each side of the river and the, the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nation. And sometimes you go through life and there is pain and sorrow. Hallelujah. There is trouble beyond anything that you can imagine. Some of us have been through heartache. We have been through some disappointment. We have sometimes faced sickness. We have faced, praise God, the dark days, hallelujah, hallelujah, of trouble. But I'm here to report to you today that there's no trouble that heaven cannot heal. And I want you to know that my eyes, how you look towards the city, how someone wrote a song and they said, oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. They tell me of a place, how do where angels sing. They tell me of a place where there's going to be a great reunion. The Bible says that one of these days, the Lord himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel. And I'm waiting to hear Jesus call my name. I've had enough trouble to last me last a lifetime. But I'm here to report that I got hope in Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. That the divine revelation is that Jesus died, but he rose again. And the good news tonight is that Brother Ryan is now, hallelujah, asleep, waiting for that great getting up morning. And when the trumpet sounds, the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And that we that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. Hallelujah. Today is a sad day for some, but it's a joyous day in the presence of the Lord. For the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I want you to know that there's a better life than this. Some of you got nice houses. You got nice cars. You got money in the bank. But one day, it'll all be over. Hallelujah. The, the, the pharaohs in Egypt, they built the fences. They were buried with gold and with silver. They put money, but you can't take it with you. Hallelujah. But one thing you can take with you is hope in Christ. The way you look at that is in what you believe. And I believe that it's not over when I close my eyes in 
death is not over. When they put the casket in the ground, how did the songwriter say, go ahead and bury me. Hallelujah, praise God. But I'll rise again. Ain't no grave can keep me down. My life is here with Christ in God. I know in whom I believe. And I'm persuaded that he's able to keep what I've committed. Good night. It's time to go home. But I'm so glad that I encourage you. You can get through this. You might cry tonight. But the Bible says that weeping, 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 may endure for the night. But your joy. Somebody clap your hands right there. One day, death is going to give way to life. Hallelujah. Just as Jesus was raised from the dead, he promised that all those that die in Christ, they're going to be raised as well. Hallelujah. And you know what separates some that grieve, that turns into rage. Some that grieve and they can't cope. It's not that I'm better than anybody else, but I got a hope deeply rooted in God's word. Hallelujah. And how you cope depends on what you believe. If you believe that this is the end, then you're going to have a hard time dealing with your grief. But if you believe in what God's word says, that then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud. To meet the Lord in the air. Thank God. You can make it through this. If it wasn't for hope, we would be of a, as of all men most miserable. But what helps me to get through is that I believe in what God's word says. Some people say, well, Pastor Brown, that's the word of a man. I don't believe in the words of a man. But praise God. Some of you drive in a car that a man made. You living in a house that a man built. You sitting in a chair that a man built. But the Bible says, the Bible is God-inspired. Because holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When I was a kid, they wrote in a book. They say Christopher Columbus discovered America. I believe that. I don't believe it much anymore, but I believe God's word. It changed my life completely. Grew up on the streets of Brownsville. And I tell this story many times. I was sitting in someone's living room. And they brought out a bag of cocaine. Put it on the table and begin to cut it with a 
A razor blade. Oh, ra how you know about razor blades? <laughs> Gotta watch it. Cut it with the razor blade. And they begin to snort. And they came to me and they said, take a hit, one in each nose. And I said, that's all right. I'll sip on this beer that I have. And I don't know what gave me the courage to say no. But there were four of us in that room. And the other three of them ended up addicted they went from cocaine to crack. And from crack, they had to end up in rehab. But God spared me away from what could have destroyed my life. And I give God all the glory. And I give him all the praise. My time is up, but I want to encourage someone tonight. If you're grieving, find a healthy way to acknowledge the reality of your sorrow. But don't focus on what you lost. Focus on hope and purpose for your future. Some people think, I used to think it when I was young, we're going to defy death. Amen. But I started to get gray hair on my head, in my nose, my mustache, and other places where I can't talk about it. Let me know that life is like a vapor. Here today, gone tomorrow. Hallelujah. But when Jesus is in the mix, when Jesus is in your life, when Jesus is the anchor that keeps your soul, Hallelujah. You can encourage somebody. Put your arm around them. You could tell them, I'm hurting. I'm grieving. But I haven't lost hope. I put my trust in one who cannot fail. Bow your heads with me today. I went over my time. You didn't wave at me. told you to wave, but you didn't wave. But God is good. Father, we thank you tonight. Some of hearts are hurting. Some, oh God, feel like they have been disappointed. God, but tonight we recognize that our hope is in Christ. We can mourn, but we can also move forward. We can hurt, but we can move forward. Pain in our hearts that a quick fix won't do. But God, help us to put my trust, my confidence in the reality of God's word. And Father, tonight, I pray that you would comfort those hurting loved ones tonight. Give them courage to face another day. That they have a bright future ahead of them. Help them to know their God. That tonight can either take their life in a downward spiral. Or it can help propel them into the greatness that God has ordained for their life. Pray, oh God, that you would use some of these young people. Use them for your glory and for your honor. 
snatch them out of the enemy's grip and help them to put their faith and their trust in a God who cannot fail. Oh Lord, help us to cope with the coping skill that comes from your word. This I ask with thanksgiving. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. God bless you. Give the Lord a clap offering right there. God is good. I thank God for meeting Brother Ryan and his family. When I met them, and I think I asked Desmond, where are you? Where your family's from? He said, from Montserrat. I said, where on earth is that? I took geography, but they didn't teach us about that country. But amen, I know about it now. I've never been there yet. Praise the Lord. But one of these days, hopefully, I'll get to see where the Ryans come from. Praise the Lord. I worked with Desmond. I think eight years we worked right here in Brooklyn, the Boulevard Housing. And they used to ask Desmond, where did you get a name like Ryan? Desmond said, you didn't know? I'm black Irish. <laughs> and they wouldn't, they wouldn't take it no further. That was the end of the debate. Amen. But we thank God for them, what God has done. God bless you. Amen. We're going to keep the family in our prayer. Meet you here in the morning at 9 a.m. Praise the Lord. Wow. Amen. We got to be up early tomorrow. Praise the Lord. But God is good. God bless you. Give the Lord one more praise. As we go. Amen. Praise the Lord. We want to pay our final respect. So we're going to ask Grace Funeral. Pastors to come. While they're coming, we want to thank you. You, the Ryan family, want to thank you for coming. We appreciate the love, and most of all, the support. Thank you so much. Thank you. At this time, we're going to allow for the final view this evening. Uh, we ask if you can final, um, follow the direction of the ushers. Uh, if we can start in the back of the chapel. Um, as Bishop Brown mentioned earlier, we will be here tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for a brief uh, prayer service following with interment at Cypress Hill Cemetery. On behalf of the family, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out this evening. This time, I should.
Chris, please, if you can lead us to the final view. And just like Bishop Brown said, we're going to be here tomorrow at 9 a.m. sharp, so please come and govern yourselves accordingly. Just follow the directions of the usher, please. Follow the directions of the usher. Thank you. We just want everybody to know that we have some refreshments and sandwich in the back, but it's grab and go. So we can ask you to grab it and go. <laughs> so we have refreshments. It's just grab and go. So please just grab it and go. Thank you.
my first open pick. So it was like I played keys, yeah, whatever. So after like the past year and a half, I mean keys every Sunday. So right. Exactly. I mean, I love it though. You know what I mean? I mean, I couldn't really do much with. We gonna make it work with that. We gonna make it work. <laughs> Tired of waiting on somebody, or you give it to somebody, and it's the wrong thing that you're looking for. You know, let me let me know how to do what I need. At least now I have reference, I can give it to them. And you know what I'm saying? So, right. I saw it the last second. I was like, okay, there she is. <laughs> 